Okay, we are recording. Hi everyone, and welcome again to my audiovisual channel. My name is Gabrielle Handel, I'm a draftsman and your host for this podcast, A Conversation About Art. With these conversations, I am doing long-term research on the meaning of art and beauty through conversations with colleagues in different artistic fields. Today I bring you episode 109 with artist Kristen Case. If you enjoy this video, please like and share all the videos and subscribe because these actions are very helpful. You can help even further by checking out the links in the description. Kristen, welcome to A Conversation About Art. You are episode 109. Please tell our listeners and viewers who you are and what you do. Yeah, uh, so my name is Kristen Case. I like to paint uh, wildlife art. And by wildlife, I like to kind of stick towards that Midwestern um, hunting fields, uh, you know, acrylic, um, just stuff that I kind of, I see within nature when we are out on hikes or at the farm and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you, do you paint them from life? Um, no, so I have a lot of friends in, well, sometimes if I do and get any good photos, but I have a lot of friends in the photography business that they'll sometimes get really nice photos and they'll send them my way and they'll say, Hey, if you want to draw this, so what I'll do is I'll reference a photo and then add my own flair to it. Like mm -hmm. my own backgrounds, my own landscapes, um, or a landscape that I caught at the farm even. And I'll, and I'll imply those into the picture itself. Okay. That sounds nice. And it sounds also quite um, like what I do pretty often with my work, which is, you know, if, if I'm, if I'm referencing a photograph, I don't copy the photograph. Like I don't reproduce the photograph. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, you know, take liberties if I want to, like a, a, something that I like to do is make long necks. So like I'll make the neck longer still, for example, and like take, just take liberties, like exaggerate things that I like, this type of stuff, you know? So I, I like that quite a lot because I'm not, um, I don't care for the reproduction of photographs via like the, what are the traditional mediums like drawing and yeah. painting. And yeah, some people do yeah. that way too much with the hyper-realism thing. So yes, please tell me what you think about that as well. I absolutely agree with you. I don't like having to replicate a photo because then it's not to me and I'm not saying this for everybody, but to me, it's, it doesn't come out as art per se, because you're not expressing something that way. You're just kind of replicating. Yeah. And I'll say this to my dad, he's an artist too, and he'll replicate a photo of the ocean or something. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, okay, well, where's your flair? I would like to see your signature in there. Uh, you know, what makes this different from the picture? Like, so I like to do a lot of that with my photos, or not photos, my paintings, uh, just to differentiate them from a photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's something about being able to see kind of like the calligraphy of the artist, the artist themselves there. Because otherwise, mm -hmm. I really feel like, you know, the camera already did it, what you're trying to do. And kind of like the point, yep. and kind of like the point is to try, I mean, for me, because you know, it's a different medium photography is its own medium mm -hmm. and so like so like the point of having a different medium is that it it's got, like says things differently so then so then it seems it seems like if a person wants to reproduce the photograph then just take the just take pictures yourself yeah and yeah and yeah, exactly. yeah and like there's this other thing also that um i don't know if it ever happens to you but then if you but if you have like for example even just the camera on your on on the phone if you're looking at a flower in the spring and the, and the color seems like amazing and then you try to take a picture of it with your phone it looks very different yeah on the on the phone's camera and so like that's another thing that it's like if you're relying on the camera it's like the whatever's happening within the camera to produce the image it has already made its own decisions in a way yeah and, and exactly it's, it's made decisions for you and so like now you lose that control over the image that you're making because the camera kind of made those decisions for you, you know? Right. And if you're not a professional photographer using like, you know, the ISO and shutter speed, all that stuff with the, it can be easy for a phone camera to do something like that, where it changes the color tone of any kind of object that you're taking a picture of. Yeah. And I agree with you there. Like it, photography is its own medium at that point. Like it, that's why it is, you know, an art form because it takes a lot of, um, and training and a lot of uh, focus on 
how to work a machine like that. And, you know, that's essentially what I'm doing with my art is I'm working the paintbrush to do what I want to see. Mm. Uh, I don't want to see something that is not replicated the right way or not. It's not the right word replicated, but you know what I mean? Like, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'd like it if you told me a little bit more about the medium that you use, which uh, you said is acrylic and the subject matter, mm -hmm. which is wilderness and, um, farm type stuff. So, I mean, is that what you've always done? And if not, you know, what were you doing before and why did you kind of veer in that direction? And, and also, uh, why did you pick acrylic as your medium or mm -hmm. yes? Okay. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I actually started out doing uh, pet portraits and I my first medium used to be graphites and colored pencils and colored pencils were fantastic. I loved them. They were just a lot more time consuming, I mm -hmm. felt, than acrylic was. And acrylic being that it dries really nice and fast, uh, it that's where it appealed to me more so than oils would have. Um, and, you know, also being a mom, you have children running around. You don't want like paint thinners laying around with oils. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, that's kind of where I was like, it got a little monotonous doing pet portraits. So I was like, okay, what do I like to do? I like to go to the farm. I like to go hunting with my husband. I like to do all these things. How can I replicate that passion into that? So merge the two. Mm. Um, so that's where I started experimenting with my wildlife stuff. And I found that that is my true passion. I truly enjoy doing it. It does not get boring after a while. Like it's just fun. Okay. 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 That, I mean, that makes perfect sense, especially if you're just in it, you know, if you, if you live where there's a, a forest or something and you know, if you, because you said, you also said you go hunting and you go to a farm and stuff. And so like, if you enjoy those things, it makes a lot of sense that you, would also enjoy their depiction um, mm -hmm. in the imagery and and okay that's cool well I like I like the idea of bringing out what I see onto something else that others can see mm. so this is how I view the world let me share that yes yes okay so then so then what do you what do you think what do you think in that case um, it is that you're bringing to a lay person quote unquote you know, when, when they see your images, when it comes to, you know, the wildlife and nature. So I like, I like to think that with my pieces, I like to do some pieces are monochromatic. Some pieces are really polychromatic. And, um, I like to think about them as a home decor piece. So like if you have somebody that lives in the city that just wants a bit of nature in their home, mm. I can provide that, or I have art that provides that to your home. Um, in that sense, uh, I want to be able to bring nature to others who can't get to it. Yes. Okay. That's lovely. Yeah. And I totally feel that because I mean, I'm not that far from nature or anything. I mean, I'm, I'm in, I'm in Brooklyn, New York, but you know, it's a city mm -hmm. and it's like, there's, of course there's parks and I have potted plants, but it's not, and I, you know, there's pigeons <laughs> and squirrels, Yeah. but it's not, it's yeah. obviously not the same. So that makes a lot of sense that, um. You know, because I mean, yeah, I, cause you I, can, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. No, you can bring a lot of greenery into a home that is in the city. I totally agree with that. Yeah. It's just that you want to feel that ambiance. You want to feel like, you know, when I open that window, I'm not smelling gasoline from the cars or exhaust or anything. I want to smell, feel like I'm hearing birds and feel like I'm seeing something else than what I actually have. Mm. And it's just like a, a surreal feeling is what I'm trying to omit from it yes yes okay and were you able to transition completely away from uh the commissioned work or do you still do that i transitioned completely away um i had a lot of people coming back to me asking for a portrait and you know i kindly turned them down and said you know i'm actually kind of steering towards this direction mm -hmm. um i will be having pieces up for sale if you're interested in that you know scenery or you know that kind of art um, otherwise I am no longer doing pet portraits and, and I had a lot of people, I had a huge following for pet portraits. 
yeah, <laughs> it yeah. was hard to say goodbye, but I had to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can definitely see that getting monotonous and wanting to get away from it. I, I wonder, I wonder, um, cause you know, the expression living off of one's art, mm -hmm. um, having done the, having done the commissioned work and now doing something, you know, what you really, really enjoy doing, which is the wilderness work. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, would you consider both fitting, you know, what, what, what would you say is living off of one's art, you know, having done both? Living off of one's art in a work sense would be doing the pet portraits, uh, mm -hmm. just because you need an income. Like uh, you have to continue this because yes, there's the talent there, but that's what people want. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't say kind of veer towards that more so. I would say if you want to live off your art and love what you do living, you have to do what your passion is. You can't just do something that makes you money. Like mm -hmm. that's how I look at it. Okay. So then do you, I mean, it, um, I mean, for you, does, because I mean, you sell you the paintings that you make now, no? Yeah. Yes, I do. Okay. But I mean, does, does, does that mean that you don't sell as many of them as, uh, you know, would you, um, uh, like, would you be able to, I don't know, pay rent off of the commissioned work versus the wilderness work? Off of the commission work, I certainly could have. Mm -hmm. um, off of the wilderness stuff, I definitely have to. I sell more prints than I do originals mm -hmm. um, because the originals obviously are going to be a lot more pricey Expensive, than yeah. the prints. Yeah. So uh, people find that it makes more sense to buy a print over that. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yes. And okay, so then do you think that because it's you know it's very common it's irritatingly common really about how oh yeah the money and the uh, and the administration and the business side of art is like people uh i think it's people who just don't know how to do it and think and don't want to deal with it and they're like yeah no that that contaminates my work or something and that's you know i shouldn't be doing that or uh, so i feel like there's that bias of the person who doesn't like it who has that opinion of the involvement of money in 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 the making of art so do you so what do you think about that do you think that it somehow contaminates the work that you output um or do you think it taints your art or something um i think i don't i wouldn't say it taints or it contaminates um i would say it definitely changes the perspective um you know, if it just like that starving, there's a thing word called starving artist, right. or you know, phrase starving artist, and it's a true thing. Like you want to live off your art, but you have to give what the people want initially because you're not making money off of your art, and it's not until you get to that comfortable position that you can say, you know, what, I'm going to do what I like and mm -hmm. get paid for what I like doing. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Yes. Yeah, I, I also have kind of mixed feelings about that stuff, you know, because um, I think pe when an artist pretends that they don't, I'm not saying that's you, I'm just saying like other, you know, mm -hmm. it's, a very, it's a very common opinion for sure that it's like an artist pretends that they don't want money for the work. It's like yeah. very irritating to me. It's like, I want money for my work. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm not going to act like I don't. Yeah. I want a lot of money for my work. It's like, you right. want to give me money for my work? I'll take it. You know, um, and, and, and I don't, and like, I mean, I, I agree with you. I don't, I don't think it tarnishes the work in any capacity. It's like, it's like, it is such a great advantage to an artist. If the artist also has any kind of proclivity for the business side of it, or whether it's socializing or making connections, all that stuff is so beneficial to, oh yeah, you know, selling, just like selling the work, um, and, and just getting the work out, the, the work out there. And it's like, sometimes, I mean, there's lots of people that don't even really have to have shows or anything because by word or mouth because they socialize so much they're able to sell the work mm -hmm. and that's really good you know yeah um yeah yeah i i envy those people because when you work so hard at something you want to see some essential of reward to it you sure. want to see something come out of it um not only are you offering something to people like for instance or example like me i'm offering nature to people that don't have it yeah um you know like you want to see something out of it 
and show you like a, a, a you're doing the right thing you're getting something in return for this it's not that you need something in return but it's a nice gesture <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. yeah 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 yes i often do wonder though and not necessarily to play devil's advocate i just wonder sometimes um you know and, and i mean i'm i guess i'm saying because i i sometimes feel like a like it creeps into me a little bit because of social media like before uh, I was making different sorts of drawings with charcoal that were bigger and were like edgier, you know, sort of quote unquote. And people seemed to, mm -hmm. to like them a lot, but several of them were bought and everything. And, and I found myself, uh, I mean, uh, I noticed that I was trying to think of further drawings to make of that same flavor. Um, so that because I liked the atten I liked the attention, I liked the money, you know. Uh, of course, I want more of both. I want the work to have attention in order for it to sell this type of stuff. Um, and then I, I kind of feel like that's maybe a form of tarnish that comes from, you know, like I imagine an artist that maybe uh, is in a gallery for that it has a gallery representation and the gallery is like, oh no, make more of these because these are the ones that are selling. And then that sucks, <laughs> you know, that would yeah. suck. Yeah, so what do you, what do you yeah. think about, what do you think about that? I think... It, it comes along the line of vanity, essentially, is what you're saying. Yeah. Um, you're saying, like, you almost get more vain with your artwork. Like, you're like, I'll, you want this? I'll, I'll paint that for you. Sure. When in reality, in, in your heart, you're like, mm, I, it's not what I really wanted to do. Mm. So I agree with you there that that can tarnish the idea of your art. Yeah, yeah. The output. Yeah, the output of the work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um yes and all right i'm a little bit curious about this hunting and this farm that you speak of um mm -hmm. so so i don't know how long have you been doing how long have you been hunting so um me when i met my husband uh we've been together nine years uh just as of the other day mm -hmm. thanks and um so he actually introduced me to his family farm um, and he introduced me to hunting and I will say I was not in love with the hunting at first, um, because when you do start hunting, it's, you know, it's getting past that threshold, like hunting's not for everybody. It's getting past that, you know, you're, it's an animal, you, sure. that kind of thing. Like you got to get past that and like, okay, you're thanking everything that you're doing. You're thanking the world. You're thanking, you know, whatever higher power you have uh for this and so it's essentially you're thanking nature and the world for get, providing to you yeah yeah yeah. and not only that and not only that but you're you're getting out and you're it's different than what the normal life has you get to experience hiking more you get to and, and i love the farm that he his family has at, like it has 160 acres it's out in the middle of nowhere wisconsin mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. I just I loved it and I wish we could move there and live there like in that area mm -hmm. but we of course jobs are over that way uh so yeah so that's kind of what brought me into the hunting and introduced it to me and then that's how I fell in love with it was just seeing everything that I never saw before and didn't know I was missing yeah 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 I I have I mean I have zero experience with that um and I mean I eat all the meat but uh <laughs> I can't, you know, sometimes some people will say, of, and, and, you know, I think kind of rightfully so, that it's like, you're cool with eating all the meat, but then you wouldn't kill an animal. And it's like, I, like, um, I, like, if you take me right now hunting, I don't know that I could do it uh, to kill mm -hmm. the animal. But at the same time, I think that, that I think that I'm pretty sure that I could get used to it and, like, learn how to do it. Yeah. Because... Because, and, and I actually disagree with you in the thing that it's not for everyone. I think it is for everyone because that's what we did, everyone did, for a very long time to stay alive. So then it's just a matter, I think it's just a matter of kind of... We've been you, sheltered. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, we sheltered ourselves, you know, in cities and with the convenience of the supermarket where that part of the, of the whole circle is like removed from our eyes anyway, from our, mm -hmm. our awareness. Um, 
Right. And, and of, I mean, of course it's very convenient and everything, but it's also very detrimental in the sense that one misses out, you know, the, the individual misses out completely from just, just seeing, you know, what you were saying just now about how nature provides for you, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, you don't, you don't pay for it with money. You pay for it with like time and kind of like that interaction with the animal and kind of like, um, that blood, sweat, and tears that co goes into like setting up game trail cams and yeah, you know, and up trails and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, it's, it's, yeah. No, please tell me. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I want to know. No, it, it goes into a lot. Like I, I had no idea until I met my husband. Like there is a lot that goes into hunting, and you don't realize. Like you have to watch the deer. You have to understand where they're going. You have to understand, you know, where where's the food source? Where's the water? Do they need a watering hole? Do they need, you know, X, Y, Z, like all those things. And it's like, wow, you, you really have to provide too for nature to provide for you. Yeah. 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 So yeah, mm -hmm. you take care, you take care, you, I mean, you basically take care of the ant of the animals, like respectful, mm -hmm. like, and you know, that's a way of respecting them and respecting nature for providing that for you. And then she provides yeah. back for you as well by giving them to you as food. Right. And we use all of them. We eat the whole deer. We make, we actually process our own ground venison. Um, we, you know, seal and package and quarter our own deer. Like we do all of that. We don't ever send them off to be processed um, because we like to have the deer in its entirety. It's all clean. There's no processed foods or additives going into it we have it just as is that's awesome that's amazing thanks that's really cool thanks okay yeah i would definitely i mean i would love to experience that one day somehow i don't know how but that'd be really cool <laughs> it's it's really it's interesting at first um i didn't like it when i was pregnant because yeah no oh well <laughs> that makes sense <laughs> Well, yeah, when you're pregnant, you're like, uh, smells, you smell everything way bad, like way worse than they were. So it's yeah, like yeah. I could smell things from the garage in the house. <laughs> yeah, but other than that, it, I love it. I love teaching our, you know, our young daughter that stuff. And, you know, like this is all normal. Like people did, like you said, used to do this for a living. Yeah, and it's yeah. really nice to, to hear that, you know, validated. It's like, okay, well, then you're not crazy from the norm. You're just practicing old routines and old um yeah routines yeah i mean not i mean not not only i mean it just worked <laughs> very well for a very long time and it's the mm -hmm. reason why we're it's it's like it's like the reason why we're here mm -hmm. because we yeah. because we did all the hunting and, and you know those gigantic animals and and, and we did it and whatever i mean i don't actually know the mechanics of how of, of, of how humans did it in the past but i saw drawings and books whatever um mm -hmm. okay <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay so um yes so okay so do you also have experience doing stuff in the farm like you know, does the farm have like cows and ch or chickens or both or, you know, and yeah. Um, so me, myself, I do not. Um, my husband has done a lot of the farming. He's told me about hay baling, which is terrible, apparently, which I can imagine you're lifting 80 pound bales of hay or probably more than that. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but he's uh, he's taking care of um, cows. I think he's taking care of a lot of different animals. I myself have not. However, I've I have helped here and there with different farms around. So I tried, <laughs> but other than that, I just enjoy the the acreage and the nature that it provides right now. Yes, 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 yeah. Because I was gonna, I, I'm pretty curious about. I mean, it it makes sense that hunting. I mean, obviously, it's different from processing an animal from a, that's been farmed. Um, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't be able to tell you how, I guess. I mean, you have to hunt, like you have to kind of chase after the one and not after the other, but I don't know. I wanted to ask you the specifics of that, of that stuff. Yeah, it's actually, a, it's kind of almost a game of chance. Um, because deer, when my husband, he does, he hunts the rut and that's, uh, archery hunting. I, unfortunately, I can't pull back hard enough on a bow, so it wouldn't have enough range. Um, 
So do you but use a gun? Him, I do rifle, yeah. Okay, okay. It continues. Right? Yeah. No, you're fine. <laughs> um, so he will go down and hunt the rut. Um, and you'll have deer. I think it was, we have a friend in the DNR who said like deer will have like a four mile radius of their home area mm -hmm. during the rut, if not more. And they'll just continue running, 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 and running and chasing does. So they'll go from place to place within that, uh, I could be wrong too. It could be like four or 10 miles. I don't remember, but it's a long radius or a big diameter of land that they travel. Mm -hmm. And, um, for me, what my husband explains it, he said, so you're, it's a game of chance at that point. Cause you have deer coming from all around the area. It's not just the deer that have been, you know, situated in at the farm. Yeah. They're moving too. So the rut is chance, but when you get into, rifle season that's a bit more like you have to kind of pattern the deer um because they're not going crazy with testosterone and running around uh you have deer um that are settling in and you're like okay we're we're good now it's time to eat before winter hits and so um that one you you have to pattern mm. um what's a rut oh sorry <laughs> Uh, the rut is when you got to explain to the silly city girl. <laughs> no, you're good. The rut is when the female does go into estrus, oh, okay. and the bucks will chase them down. And estrus is basically when they're in heat. Okay. And the bucks will chase them down to breed. Okay. And yes. So I mean, does that have anything to do with the expression "stuck in a rut"? And if so, what? Yep. Actually, I, I think it does that, and I think it also has the, it also relates to like a rut, like a ditch. Um, but it wouldn't surprise me if it didn't have any relation to that uh, rut that you just said, because that they, they go nuts. You, there are videos. I mean, if you go on YouTube or Google and you type in crazy rut deer moments, you will find the craziest things, like deer running into. Uh, hair salons like just because they they didn't see their they thought their reflection was another buck and they were gonna hit it with its antlers <laughs> like okay there's some crazy things out there all right so crazy rut deer moments is yeah it's I should, a, I should... just an idea. yeah okay. it, it, if you want a good laugh go for that <laughs> i will look for that yes i will absolutely okay uh <laughs> okay so okay so mrs case what is art for you i mean just no no not for you what is art just what is art Art for me is a way to escape without escaping. It's okay. a way to go back into a moment without being in the moment. Um, so for me, when I'm doing a wilderness piece or a wildlife piece, it's I'm there again. I'm, I'm feeling a moment that relates to this and that's where I am in my head. And when I zone out, my husband will actually get mad at me when he's trying to talk to me because I I will be zoned in because I am literally playing out what is happening in my head, and I'm also like, this is turning out fantastic. I got to keep painting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's that's what it is. It's it's a place to escape without escaping. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 kind of funny about uh, what you said about being um, zoned in and your husband getting irritated because. It, it really, it's really the case. I have a teacher. I mean, I, I had a teacher. His name is Stephen Assail. And I mean, so, so when you're there, when you're zoned in and somebody talks to you, it happens like what you're saying that you kind of don't know that somebody's talking to you. You don't realize that somebody's talking yeah. to you. And then if you lift your head, you're like, what? I mean, you know, like you yeah. can't, you can't talk. And so like this guy, Stephen Assail that I'm telling you about, he's like always there and he always talks he always talks slowly and kind of like as if he is in there drawing or painting all the time. And he says yep. if that makes sense a lot. And I think it's because he knows that he sounds, <laughs> or, you know, I'm speculating. I don't actually know um, that, 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 you know, he's, he's just in there a lot all the time because, you know, he makes a lot of work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, honestly, you I find myself, I actually struggle with telling stories from here and there because I think a lot faster than my mouth does. And yeah, I notice like I'll skip a piece, a part, a crucial piece of a story and people are like, what, what was the story <laughs> then here? And I'll be like, yeah, I, I already told you. And they'll be like, no, you didn't. I'm like, okay, sorry. <laughs> 
that's funny. Okay. Um, yeah, I totally that that's really frustrating because like even if you're drawing or or writing stuff down with by hand or on the keyboard or trying mm -hmm. to recite, you know, something using your mouth, like these other tools that we have to kind of you know, ex expulsate those thoughts and ideas. It's none of them are fast enough really mm -hmm. to kind of keep up no. with the thoughts within yeah no kidding that's exactly how i put it like it's like your brain's running faster than your mouth yeah for sure okay um i'm curious about your use of the expression or or you know the term escaping um mm -hmm. because i guess i kind of i i guess i kind of understand the term as meaning you know like you don't you don't want to be where you are now so you want to get away oh yeah so so then so I guess yes go ahead uh, yeah, so I guess escaping isn't the right word. I, uh, it's more or less like going on vacation, and I didn't yes. know a quicker word for that. Um, it's like a quick vacation on your counter. Here you mm -hmm. go. <laughs> so it's just escaping, escaping essentially your workload. It's escaping uh, your your duties for just a moment. Um, and I'm not saying I want to escape motherhood or anything like that. I love being a mom. I love my daughter. But there is moments where it's like, you need you need to breathe. Sure. I get that. There are moments where you need to breathe. There are moments where you don't want to think about work when you come home. You don't want to be worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow. And that's what art provides for me. It helps you settle down, be in the moment, live life where you are. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't trying to insinuate that you're that you hate your life or something, and that you are, use your drawings to try to get away from it. That's not what I meant. No. I just, I just found the I usage. Didn't take it that way. Okay, no. okay, good. No, I just, I just, you know, sometimes, sometimes I just find the use of certain words or expressions interesting. Like, for example, um, another episode that I recorded this week, the person said that art making work was an addiction for them, and mm -hmm. I was like. Why did you use that word? Because, you know, I mean, if you use, you know, I mean, addictions are typically associated with negative detrimental things like drug addiction mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, um, yeah. you know, gambling or whatever. So then I was like, I don't know. I mean, because, you know, she could have she could have used the or, you know, what I would have maybe used for myself would be need rather than addiction in the sense that, you know, you need to eat, you need to breathe. <laughs> Um, yep. So then, yeah. yeah, so then, so then the production of work is necessary for sustenance in the way that eating and breathing are necessary for sustenance. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah. And I actually, I think there are similarities in what she was trying to say with addiction in the fact that you feel that itch when you yes. have it, when you finish the piece and then you feel the itch, like, oh, I really got to paint something else. Like, yeah, yeah. that, that, that. I get those moments all the time. I'll be like, honey, you got, you got Avery. Great. I'm going to go paint. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so like I get, I get those itches. Like, yeah, um, yeah. But I would call that an itch. I wouldn't call it an addiction. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I definitely agree that there's overlaps and, and, you know, based on what happens, um, with withdrawals, for example, of whatever, like the really yeah. hard drugs, for example, you know, it could be easy to argue that they're necessary. You know, if somebody mm -hmm. didn't know better, they would, the, you know, they could, you can easily argue that it's, that it's a need because of the consequence of not taking the drug. Um, right. It, it makes me think of a kind of like a backwards sort of argument that's really an argument against, against um, like legal drugs, like medicines and stuff. And mm -hmm. let me see if I can even do this. Okay. Give me a second. <laughs> no so, problem. so. You know how alcohol uh, will reduce anxiety in a person if the person is anxious and though so then that they're able to be more sociable and you know they calm down they're not as they're not as worried about stuff and so they can relax and this type of stuff right so then yeah so then that doesn't mean that they lack alcohol in their system <laughs> right um, yeah just because they have kind of this improved self in a way when they're a little bit alcoholated. Um, you yeah. know, so then, so then, you know, that's kind of like the argument against the pharmaceuticals that the person, that person was trying to do with the alcohol example. Um, and so like, 
you know, if, if similarly with, with like drugs, viewing the, viewing the, res, ha, what happens when a person is having withdrawals and it, for sure it's easy to think that the, the, whatever the drug is, is actually the person just happens to need that for sustenance or just to be alive or function. Um, Cause right. they don't know any better or just this type of stuff. Um, right. And then it's hard to leave that. I'm sorry. And then it's hard to leave something like that. I would imagine. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And uh, you yeah. know, I guess, I guess that would be another similarity, uh, an arguable similarity with the term addiction as well, because it's like, if you were obligated in any way, or if I was obligated in any way to stop doing art, making work completely, then that yeah, like would say be... you broke your hand and then your hand doesn't work. Yeah, that would be terrible. I, I wouldn't yeah. like that at all. It's like I, I don't feel it doesn't feel right when I'm not able to draw for a week. I can't imagine if I was mm -hmm. obligated by, you know, by, by, by like a physical circumstance or, you know, I have to work full time or something. Um, yeah. Something like that. So I guess. All right. Maybe. I mean, that didn't even occur to me when I was having <laughs> when I was asking the person about the term addiction. Mm -hmm. um okay so i yeah. would say there's similarities but it's not the right word yeah there's yeah, yeah. definite similarities yeah 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 for sure yeah no i mean it's just that big because of the because of that overlap it does make some sense that it does make sense that the a person would use the term uh the term addiction uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to their relationship with art so um Okay, and, and well, I guess I'd like to try to apply the same kind of thing to the term escape because, because there are definitely, there, there's definitely overlap with what happens when you're either contemplating a work of art or making a work of art because even though it obviously does not physically take you out of where you're standing, it definitely, yeah. kind of like that contemplation is... I mean, the contemplation and the making of the contemplation of work and the making of work are both really very absorbing. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're doing it right, I think. Um, mm -hmm. And so you might as well be somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So. All right, so what is beauty, Mrs. Case? It's a broad question. Beauty, and I don't want to sound cliche, but beauty is truly in the eye of the beholder. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, it sounds, sounds cliche, but, you know, like for me, beauty is, you know, just love and family around you, feeling the love from loved ones being there with you. Um, being in an area that has, I can't explain it the best way, but that's how I picture it is overall happiness and love. That's beauty to me. Mm -hmm. And how I depict that is through what I see when I'm with my family, we spend a lot of time together when we go down to the farm, that is that beauty to me because we just have a blast down there and it's always a positive interaction. It's always a positive time. So it, that to me is beauty. Okay. Okay. Um, and, but why, why did you proceed it with beauty is in the eye of the beholder? Because it's different for everybody. It's different. Like, um, for somebody else who, you know, it just depends on their personality. I'm not saying like this is this is kind of an outlandish one, but like somebody who really likes to be by themselves and likes to just make a lot of money, like to them, that's beauty being in that comfort zone. Like we make this money. I'm by myself. I don't need to answer to no one like that's beauty to them. Um, but for me, it's being around and surrounding yourself with loved ones and being in that environment rather than you know, so it's different for everybody. And that's, I was just explaining how it was different for me. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and I mean, do you, do you, do you have any arguments or any kind of problem with 
beauty being in the eye of the beholder and how it insinuates that there is no universal beauty, for example. Or, yeah. yes, go ahead, sorry. No, you're good. Um, I really don't, I don't know that I would be mad about that because that just, that's what makes us all different. Um, I don't know that it's just the people that can't understand that being different is okay. And that's where the, the, that's where the issue clashes is that. So it's just becoming accepting that there's different is okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. And I mean, is, I, I guess, um, my, my personal, one of my personal issues with the phrase beauty is in the eye of the beholder is that it isn't a it isn't a definition of art. It's just saying, I mean, what that means is that beauty, what it, what it says is that beauty is different for everyone, but it doesn't explicitly say what is beauty. You know, mm -hmm. like a definition of, um, like what you were saying, for example, for art, that art is a way to escape without escaping, for example. Mm -hmm. Or, um, I don't know, like hunting, for example, is the act of, um, Okay, just give me a second. <laughs> uh, killing, no, killing, you're... killing an am uh, killing an animal for uh, sustenance, you know, to kind of like derive benefits from the animal, like with the fur and the you know the fat and the mm -hmm. you know making things from from the animal, and you know, so like a definition of that sort. I mean, uh, so what what do you think about that? Uh, so I'm thinking you're asking for the definition of what is beauty in art now. Uh, no, beauty. Just, uh, what is beauty? That's a hard question, though. <laughs> because, because, I mean, I agree, like, I agree with you, for example, at, at least to a certain extent, that, that, um, you know, when it comes to saying that beauty is an idol, because, I mean, I've, you know, that's, that's why I started the podcast, because I, I have issues with, with certain things that are said very, very often about both art and beauty. Um, mm -hmm. and I mean, and I mean, beauty being in the eye of the beholder is, of course, true, because, People like different things. Um, yeah. At, at the same time, though, I think there's also more than one universal in terms of what we think is beautiful because, because I would be, I mean, I think it's pretty common that people will like some aspect of nature at least in mm -hmm. some capacity, whether, I mean, it's like, you know, if, if, you know, if you don't like hunt, if a person doesn't like hunting, they at least... They might like, you know, the trees and the plants, and I mean, they like the animal itself while it's alive, for example. Other people, yes. uh, like, I don't, like, again, I'm not familiar with hunting, and I don't think I would like it at first, at least. Um, but I think the carcasses of animals, for example, and a rotting carcass is unbelievable. You know, and like, this process of decay yes. is, it's like, amazing to look at. I mean, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to just be an animal, it can be plants and or bugs, you know, whatever. But it's, it's like... Right. But uh, I think like for like nature is a good example of kind of like a constant because because, you know, yeah, we're individuals we're we're different from each other, but we're not that different that we're not that different, <laughs> you know, is I guess is right. what I'm saying. Um, and because after all, we're all human and everything and there's lots of commonalities that is are the same for everyone. Everyone has a skeleton. Everyone has muscles. Everyone has hair. Um, for example, everyone has a brain. This type of stuff, we you know. We all bleed red. What? We all bleed red. Exactly. Yeah. So, 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 you know, it just makes a lot of sense to me that there would be. I just feel like it's so like separationist in a way, um, and that's kind of like my problem with it. Um, in in with the phrase of beauty is in the eye of the beholder because. Well, I have a lot of problems with it, and I mean, I'm not. I'm, I don't. I don't mean to like vent. Uh, at, like, like berate you or like, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just kind of no, like, no. <laughs> like vent venting about it because I just feel like, uh, like the expression kind of allows for so many things that are just so shitty, like the trash that is trying to pass for art lately, uh, for a while now, for example, you know, um, and, and I just find it very frustrating. I don't know. What do you think about the rant? <laughs> no, I... I agree with you. I just didn't know the best 
term for like in the eye of the beholder. But yes, I agree with that. There is some, you can negate that phrase and yes, there should be a universal beauty. And I think that would definitely, a lot of people would come down to, you know, love and happiness that those two together, that is beauty. Like that is, that benefits anyone and everything. Um, you know, you think about deer, for instance, they live in a herd, like they are in a big group for safety, uh, like wildebeest, you know, buffalo, yeah, they yeah. all live in a herd, like that is their family unit. And for any animal out there, they would probably agree, love and family and being surrounded with people that care for you is what matters most. And that is beauty. Yes, yes. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. the, those gregarious animals, they know what's up, right? <laughs> yeah they know what's what's important and what <laughs> yes. they need is you know the safety in numbers they need their family yes yes okay so so i mean when you're making your work do you i mean are you thinking of kind of incorporating i mean are you trying i mean do, do you try to make your work be beautiful or have a sense of beauty or, or bring something of the sort to to i mean are you thinking of that about that while you're making your work yeah, actually, this uh, new spring piece I'm working on, it's um, it's a mom, a doe, and her brand new baby in Aww. like the early spring. And in this piece, I was thinking of me and my daughter. Um, so it's like, that's their baby in the yeah. wild. Like, this is my baby. Like, we're <laughs> all the same. We, we love our children. Like, yeah, yeah. We, so it was just kind of like, I do incorporate the same emotion that I deal with every day into my work. Okay, that's lovely. I shouldn't say deal, I should say more like that I get to experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 a good, that's good. Yes. Yeah, because it's like, because a lot of time, it's not I have to, it's I get to or I want to. Yep. Yeah. And that's how I try to live every day. You try to say, I get to have this. I get to do those things. I get to, I, I get to walk today. I'm so happy I get to walk yeah. just down the road. Like, yeah. you know, like simple things like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cause, um, it definitely happens to me that I'll get anxious or grumpy about just whatever stupid shit. And then I'm like, but wait, I, you know, I didn't have to get up at a specific time. I was able to get up whenever I wanted. And I was able to like snuggle my husband for however long I wanted mm -hmm. before getting out of bed. And then I can get up mm -hmm. and do exercise. And then I make delicious breakfast for both of us every mm -hmm. day, you know, and it just, I don't know. It's like, I don't know. I mean, I, I think, I think the part about uh, switching that I have to, the I have to versus, I mean, the I have to with I get to is, a really good reminder for myself and you know because sometimes I mean you know uh, it's definitely uh, comically stereotypical female anxiety stuff of like oh my god I have to find a way to make money or something it's definitely for me uh, but mm -hmm. then it's like but then it's like but you know what I'm doing here is it has incalculable value you know like in yeah. in, in one's home taking care of your husband and of, of the home itself, you know, the home that we both work for, like this, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, yes. working as a unit together to keep this household functioning. Yes, to build, yeah, yeah, build the home and then take care of the tiny person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Okay. exactly. So that's lovely, by the way, congratulations. I don't know how long you've had your kid, but congratulations, that's great. <laughs> Well, thank you. She will be four in August. Oh, she's a teeny tiny little person. That's cool. She loves that kid is a beast. Like she loves going on four wheelers. She loves <laughs> pretty much anything outside. She has no fear. That's <laughs> and lovely. It, it, like it scares me more than her if she was doing something dangerous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Your, it's your first kid. Yeah, and I think she'll be our only one. Okay, okay. Yeah, because I was going to yeah. say that uh, typically when, I mean, and not that I know from experience because I don't, but typically when when the parents have a second kid, they're like, oh, yeah, you want to play with a knife? That's fine. You'll be fine. You know, <laughs> you know, because it's like the amount of, because, you know, the first kid is like, oh, my God, don't touch the cotton ball, you know, <laughs> versus <laughs> then afterwards you're like, oh, the cotton ball was fine. And so then, you know, this type of, you know, this type of learning type stuff 
it's pretty interesting. And I'm definitely, I'm definitely not that kind of parent. I'm the mm -hmm. kind of parent that's like, I will tell you that that's probably not a good idea. And I will warn you, um, if I, obviously if she's going to like fall and crack her head open, I'm going to stop it. Right. Um, but you know, there are instances like, um, for an example, one time she was playing on these two concrete steps outside. Well, she decided to crawl down them head first. And I told her, Hey, that's not a good idea. That's like, and she's not up high, nothing, but, yeah. uh, she was, this was probably last summer. So she was three or something. And, uh, she decided to do it again. And then she missed the last step. And so her <laughs> arm fell and she hit her like cheek. Yeah. And I'm like, See, that's why we listen to mama like I'm not trying to put on you like yeah you need to listen to mama all the time but you kind of do <laughs> yeah a little <laughs> you know what I'm talking about you know I've been there I've done this <laughs> you, you can only shelter them so much though and until they need to do they need to learn it for themselves and yeah. I agree with that wholeheartedly because that was me as a kid like I had to teach myself a lot of stuff and I had to um uh, I also was told, you know, like, this is how it's going to happen. And then I was, I, I effed around and found out what happened anyway. So, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I agree with that style of parenting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, um, one sometimes just has to experience, I mean, because that's definitely my case. I mean, I didn't necessarily got, a, I didn't necessarily get a ton of forewarnings or anything, but I wanted mm -hmm. to experience certain things for myself like physic like i wanted to do the thing i wanted to say the thing i wanted to wear the thing i wanted to you know um and yeah. it's just like i i think i got pretty lucky in that i didn't get super fucked up in certain some of the things that i wanted to experience um but yeah. i you know because of course it's a risk that one takes when you do certain things okay all right mm -hmm. <laughs> all right so mrs case we've broken the 51 minute, the 50 minute mark of our conversation. So I'm going to go ahead and start to close it out. Um, do you want to add anything? Where can your work be found? Is there anything you have coming up that you're excited about? This type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, um, so I am Hunter's Desire Art is uh, my handle on uh, Facebook. So if you ever want to look for me and my artwork, it's Hunter's Desire Art. Um, and on Instagram, it's just Hunter's Desire. Um, right now I am really excited for this next space. It's actually next to me. Um, but it's that mom and baby deer yes. and, uh, you know, the spring and everything. So I'm excited to showcase that. Um, and I was going to experiment a little with modeling paste, mm -hmm. so that'll be different. Uh, other than that, I really enjoyed talking with you. This is, this was lovely. Yeah, this is, this is fun. And I really appreciate you, you know, taking time out of your, out of your art and mom day art mom and housewife day also yeah to, to, to talk yeah. i really appreciate it okay so i'll go ahead and uh start closing it out um for for us here so thank you very much kristen for kristen for talking to me today um thank you everyone for listening if you want to support kristen and the podcast you can do so through the links in the video description below. so please make sure to have a look at those and well thank you again everyone and i will see see you in the next episode I'm going to stop it now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>